Tyler Perry, you dog, you. That was Trevant Rhodes's one and only reaction upon seeing the final credits of Tyler Perry's latest film, Mi Culpa. Audiences will feel the same way. As the sensual thriller draws to a climax, Kelly Rowland's character, Chicago defense attorney Mi Harper, experiences a series of unexpected events that disrupt her life. This is a watch it again. Writer, director, and producer Perry reminds Tudum, keep watching it till you've seen it all. If you view it again, you'll be able to spot the small easter eggs I hide throughout the video, and you'll be able to remark, oh, now I see why. In that vein, allow me to present to you the maze of me culpa. Everyone stand up. Will Zyre's defense be handled by me in court? Not exactly. In the opening scene of me culpa, we see Cal, who is unemployed and resentful, and Azalea, who watches from the sidelines, all while Mi finds herself in the unfortunate position of being the only income for her family. Amidst her personal problems, Mi receives what appears to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, the legal representation of Rhodes's character, hotshot artist Zaire Malloy, who is accused of the murder of his fiancée. Furthermore, Ray, Cal's brother, is the prosecutor in charge of the case. To put it mildly, this is an extremely hectic work week. However, matters quickly become much more convoluted. The more Mi becomes involved with Zaire, the more unhappy she feels at home. Despite the fact that Zyre's ominous paintings appear to have hints that might implicate Cal in the crime, Mi loses it and surrenders to him when her private investigator Jimmy gives her a photo of him entering a hotel room with another lady. The seductive and perhaps deadly Zyre finds solace and seduction in creating provocative art. Rhodes shares this pastime. He writes to Tudum via email and says, Painting feels good to me too. Subsequent to an intimate encounter with Zyre, Mi unearths a collection of female portraits on the wall, one of which is a defaced image of Zyre's deceased ex-girlfriend. In her haste to go, she finds out that the photo that appeared to show her husband infidelity was actually him visiting his sick mother, which only adds to her feelings of bewilderment and hopelessness. In reality, did Zaire murder his fiancée? No, Mi is so distraught after a particularly trying week that she decides to leave the case and take a vacation to a Dominican resort. But she is shocked to see the woman Zaire is supposed to kill working at her hotel. This kind of plot surprise comes straight from the characters, according to Perry. The characters, the way they show up in my head. They show up as real people telling me stories, and I start to write and write and write, he expresses to Tudum. While I listen to their stories and analyze their intentions, I watch what they say, and I'm following all the clues to the spot where the twist should occur. The twist here arises from the shadowy undercurrents of ambition, jealously, and dishonesty inside Mi's family life, and it strikes shortly after she returns from her travels. Mi has always choose to think that her brother-in-law and legal opponent Ray is looking out for what's best for the law. It was a poor decision. After Zaire had an affair with Ray's wife Charlize, Ray becomes vengeful and orchestrates a plot to accuse him. Additionally, Ray believes that he will be able to win the forthcoming mayoral race with the help of sympathy votes garnered by his mother's false illness diagnosis and a successful prosecution. During the ensuing violent altercation, Azalea murders Charlize, who is, if we're being really honest, the worst mother-in-law ever. After Mi runs away, Cal, who appears to be apologetic, comes to her aid. However, a phone conversation that is overheard later proves that Cal was actually involved in the hoax from the beginning. Mi narrowly avoids her husband's death and makes room for Ray's arrest when she swerves their automobile into the path of an approaching semi-trailer. Will Mi and Zyre eventually tie the knot? Take your time. Apparently, Mi decides she's had enough of people for the time being, according to Perry. I believe Zyre moves on, but he misses her, she says, her voice trailing off. Mi Culpa's last scene, in which she stands back and watches Zyre speak to the press, lends credence to such reading. With his record cleared, he sends a heartfelt message of gratitude to me, pleading for a chance to visit her soon. She then walks away after dumping her phone in the garbage. Perry says, perhaps there's another movie here. She laughs. Who knows? Maybe he begins to pursue her. Perhaps not till she returns from her much needed vacation. Or, to paraphrase Rhodes, Netflix and Chillville. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.